just needed to collectively tread some water. A pair of pitchers propelling the Rangers through some choppy seas. A look back at Tommy Hunter and Rich Harden telling you all you need to know about where this team is headed. Shutdown performances to help get through the next day of healing for those missing in action. Dominating starts allowing a stalled and shorthanded offense to scratch out some wins. Now tonight, the rock-solid Colby Lewis getting his turn to add to this run of extraordinary starts. The Rangers looking to take game two from the Minnesota Twins. Coming up now on Fox Sports Southwest. Flirting with history, the Rangers take the field against Minnesota. They did not get a no-hitter yesterday, but it was a beautiful four pitchers combining on it. One hitter as the Rangers improved to 70 and 54 for the season. Game two of the four-game series against the Twins tonight. We welcome you to Ranger Baseball along with Tom Grieve. I'm Josh Lewin. And the pitching matchup tonight I think is very interesting because it's two guys who in 2007, well, one of these guys was hurt, the other one was headed to Japan. It was going so poorly for him in the big leagues. But Colby Lewis and Carl Pavano head-to-head -head tonight. Yeah, and Colby Lewis continues to go up against an excellent pitcher. In his last six starts, the Rangers have only scored seven runs for him. On the season, they've scored over four runs for him. If they'd done that in his last seven starts, he'd be about 14 and 7 or 14 and 8 himself. Carl Pavano's having an excellent year, and on paper, you would expect this to be a fairly low scoring game. Both guys throw a lot of strikes, both guys have gotten a lot of outs this year. And it's going to be tough to duplicate for Colby Lewis what Rich Harden and company did yesterday. The Twins waited until the ninth inning to get their only hit. It was Joe Mauer of all people on an 0 and 2 count off Neftali Feliz. The second game of the series, the Rangers and the Twins coming up right after this.
getting more and more familiar with. Andres Blanco at second base, not Ian Kinzer. The hope is that Kinzer's coming back soon. For more on that, we go to Dana Larson. Yes, uh, Josh, very good news on the injury front for Ian Kinzer. An MRI today on that uh, strained groin injury showed significant improvement. He was immediately cleared to resume baseball activities, which he did by hitting the batting cage. Took a hundred swings in the batting cage today and says he can't wait to see how he feels tomorrow. The next step is probably just come, come to the field tomorrow, see how I feel, um, see how sore I am, try to work out the soreness and hopefully get on the field and take some ground balls, um, maybe run the bases a little bit and, and take, some, take some batting practice. So Ian Kinzer will continue to build up his conditioning over the next couple of days and hope to be out on a rehab assignment by the end of the week. Nelson Cruz may be doing the same on Thursday. So, Josh, maybe a light at the end of the tunnel with regards to these injuries. Yeah, the team is only getting healthier. That's the hope anyway. Thank you, Dana. In the meantime, the Rangers enjoy an eight-and-a-half game lead on the A's. Nine now over the Angels. They'll update their games tonight. They are underway. Right now, we're checking out the Minnesota Twins starting lineup. Denard Span leads it off. Orlando Hudson after that. The no-hitter spoiler. Joe Maurer is DHing tonight. Then it's Kubel and Kadire with Morno still out. Delman Young, Danny Valencia, Alexi Casilla. And the catcher tonight, Drew Butera. Colby Lewis, 9-10. and 10. He's been stuck on nine wins for a good long time. Trying to get over the hump, get to double digits. We're scouting him out courtesy of Suzuki. Uh, when you look at these three points, it's hard to imagine that Kobe is 9 and 10. His ZRA is 337. That's 12th in the league. He has 154 strikeouts at 155 innings. His opponent's batting average is 224. That's the fourth best in the American League. And he's had two or fewer walks in 11 of his last 12 starts. It just doesn't add up until you look at his last six starts and see that the Rangers have only scored seven runs for him. And you get an idea of why he's 9 and 10. Could easily be 12 and 8 with any kind of run support in his last six starts. Rangers already have three 10-game winners. Colby trying to become the fourth. And at the very least, it's a familiar umpire to Colby Lewis. This continues to be uncanny. Jim Wolfe has already had home plate for the Rangers five times this year. That's a lot. And in four of those five, the starting pitcher has been Colby Lewis. So they're familiar with each other. And Denard Span, followed by Orlando Hudson. We are underway on... I got to pause just to let this sink in. On an 80... Seven degree summer night. Yeah, it's pretty amazing when it's a nice warm night and it's about 15 or 16 degrees colder than it was last night. 87 is what we've been waking up to. Now one up and outside, two and one the count to span. Well, the other thing Kobe has run up against in his last six or seven starts is an excellent opponent, an excellent starting pitcher for an opponent. Now on rifled foul by Span. The last time out was the first time all year that he threw fewer than 102 pitches in one of his games. And that was taking a shutout through the seventh inning stretch, too. Ladies and gentlemen, that thing that dares not speak its name. <laughs> Span lines back to Colby Lewis, and we'll show you the rest of the Ranger defense while we have an opportunity. Hamilton, Borbone, and Murphy roam the outfield. It's Young, Andrews, Blanco, and Moreland in the infield. And Benji Molina back behind the plate. The Rangers taking that no-hit bid so deep into the game yesterday. They did that to the team leading the majors in batting average. It ended up as the 22nd one-hitter in team history, the first in eight years' time. And tagged just the second time ever that a no-hit bid was foiled in the ninth inning in Arlington, Texas. The only other time it happened, that was a Dave Bergman single off of Nolan Ryan more than 20 years ago at the old ballpark. The Rangers tantalizingly close. 
to authoring the sixth no hitter in the majors in 2010. And the guy on deck, that was your villain, Joe Maurer, on an 0 2 count. But there's a reason he's won three batting titles in the last four years. 0 and 2, no big deal. And he just sent one right by the glove of Elvis Andrews to break it up clean. This will be broken up right now. Orlando Hudson in the right. It is, the, it is the case many times when a ball is hit hard. You could see Molina's glove on the outside corner and Kobe's pitch came over the middle of the plate. And Hudson put a nice swing on it and a solid line drive to right field. Mauer at a 330 batting average is having a down year. He will not win the batting title, you wouldn't think, here in 2010. But he did win it last season, made a run at a 400 batting average for a while. Highest batting average ever from a catcher in a full season was 367. Because that is not a position where you're supposed to be able to hit for average. Your body just takes a beating. Didn't feel the double play depth. Kubel on deck. I think Maurer has an interesting take also, Tom, on why hitting 400 might not happen in this particular era. Maurer says he's a middle-of-the-order guy. You're going to face, on average, three different pitchers a game, sometimes four. And in the old days, you'd see usually just one or two. Maurer says on a, on a given night, I'm trying to figure out how to hit a lot of different kinds of pitches from a lot of different people. Yeah, and I think that's especially true for someone like him. Hitting in the middle of the lineup, you're going to face at least once a night a really good left-handed relief yeah. specialist who's going to come in, and I think there's probably a lot to that. You're much more comfortable if you face the starting pitcher four times in a game than starting pitcher three times and a couple of other guys once. Another lefty comes up now as Jason Kubel. And he doesn't get as much attention, obviously, as the other lefties, Maurer and Morneau, when he's healthy. But you start to look inside the numbers, figure out who Jason Kubel is. This guy can play. He knocked in 100 runs last year. Kubel and Maurer were the top two in the league last year in terms of slugging percentage against right-handers. Kubel was ahead of guys like A-Rod and Mark Teixeira, guys that you'd think of first. And again, having kind of a down year compared to last year, like Joe Maurer, but it's still pretty good. To center again, and there's Bourbon. Yeah, Kubel's average is down, but he's still got a great chance to hit 20 home runs and knock in 100 runs. In the middle of the twins lineup. Colby lost to the twins in Minneapolis. The Rangers as a team were winless up there in Minnesota. And it might be psychological fluff, I don't know, Tom, but proving that you can beat the teams that you're going to be possibly facing at some point in October if you're in October, that doesn't hurt. Rangers were unable to win in Tampa Bay. They didn't win at Yankee Stadium this year, though they did beat the Yankees here. You didn't want to start out 0-4 against Minnesota here in the regular season because of Rich Harden. That did not happen yesterday. Yeah, and I think it, it really has some relevance if you face the other team three times and it's your top three starters pitching and your lineup is healthy. But when the Rangers go to postseason play, and let's say they play Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is going to see different pitchers than they saw in that series. 
and they're probably going to see Nelly Cruz and Ian Kinsler. So, you know, an entirely different look that they get if it happens that the Rangers play them in postseason play. And the signs today were very good. Nelly and Ian hopefully will be back not too far down the road. The one adjustment the Rangers did make today, designating Joaquin Arias. And Joaquin was with the team all the way until today, August 24th. The veteran Alex Cora has been summoned. Oklahoma City playing in round rod, so he should be able to get here pretty quickly. Again towards center, sinking. Here comes Borbone. Face first time, and it got by. That's going to let two runs come in. It's a double for Kadir. What a do or die play for Borbone. He makes that catch. It's nothing, nothing, and he's on every highlight reel show tomorrow. But instead, he couldn't grab the baseball. It's two nothing twins. Yeah, Paul was not hit hard. He hit it right off the end of the bat and just kind of blooped it into center field. And you've got a choice to make as a center fielder. Do you try to catch it and end the inning with nothing happening? Do you play it on a bounce and let one run score, but not two? He chose to go for it, and when he missed it, both runs scored. Great try. Well, the Rangers struck for two in the first inning yesterday. Here's a little turnaround. Delman Young at the plate. The Twins had played two four-nothing games in a row, winning one and losing one. Tagged. Elvis Andrews will gobble it up. If Mauer had hit it just like that in the ninth inning last night. Oh well. Two nothing. Twins. Rangers coming up. Check out the 2010 F-150 and drive one. Oh, it is the best in Texas. Buy Progressive for a money-saving car insurance quote. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. Buy Jack in the Box. Get Jack's really big chicken sandwich combo for only $3.99 plus tax. And buy Bud Light Lime. The drinkability of Bud Light with the refreshing taste of lime. The Rangers now trailing 2-0. We'll send up Andrews, Young, and Hamilton. Josh continues to lead the majors in batting average. And at the ballpark this year is Silly hitting 395. It's Guerrero and Murphy after that. Molina and Moreland, Blanco and Borbone. And Carl Pavano's on the mound. He's got 15 wins already. His career high is 18 back in 2004 with Florida. Here's the Suzuki scouting report. He's got an excellent ERA. A lot of innings pitched, tied for fourth, and a lot of ground ball outs. The fourth most ground ball outs. Here's one right now. As if on cue, Andrews in with that 13 game hitting streak, He's bouncing out to second base. In his last five starts, opponents have had a pretty good time against him. A lot of that happened in his last start. 15 hits in six innings, seven runs. 
one of his worst starts of the year. Well, it's funny how we talked about a potential no hitter all night last night, and yeah, with Devano, he, he's fresh off a 15 hitter. Now he throws sinkers, gets a lot of ground balls, and doesn't walk anybody. One and a half walks per nine innings, third best ratio in the major leagues. You have to hit your way on, and a lot of times you're going to have to a, find a hole with a ground ball because he keeps the ball down pretty well. Uh, walks to strikeouts ratio, Cliff Lee in a league of his own from the non Cliff Lee division. He's number two behind Roy Halliday. And Pavano has thrown 174 innings so far this year with over a month left in the season. His best season came in 2004 with the Marlins. He went 18 and 8 and signed a huge four year contract with the Yankees. And in four years with the Yankees, he pitched 145 innings. He's already thrown more innings this year than he did in four years with the Yankees. He's hurt the whole time. That one down the way from Michael Young, who strikes out. The Twins defensively have a young of their own, Delman in left, or Span Kubel out there with them. There's the infield defense, and again, it's not Mauer catching tonight. Mauer's the agent. We see Drew Butera, son of Sal Butera. Used to back up Butch Weiniger with the Twins back in the day. Teammate of Ron Washington with the Twins in the 80s. Hamilton. And what else? A bouncing ball. The recovery at first base by Kadire. The Rangers disposed of by Carl Pavano. 2 0 Minnesota after one. Quarter tonight. Nice group for a nice evening. We have Ryan Northcutt from Mercy Heart. Tell us about your organization, Ryan. Mercy Heart really is a ministry that is geared towards ex offenders and their families. Um, while there are a lot of ministries that do prison ministry, there's a whole family that's on the outside during their incarceration time. We really seek to kind of grab that family, pull them in, minister to them with all of our ministries that we do, and, and really try and help them through this ordeal. There we go. Ryan, keep up the great work. Good to have you here at the Thank ballpark. Josh? Thank you, Jim. Nice to have that group here tonight. It's not a bad crowd at all for a Tuesday night. A humid Tuesday night, but again with the temperatures in the mid 80s and not the 10 somethings. Danny Valencia bats. After Minnesota scored twice on a Michael Kadire double in the top of the first. Valencia has come up from Triple A. He's hit a couple of home runs. The first one was a grand slam against Zach Greinke. And then he homered off of Jared Weaver just the other night in Minnesota. About a 430-foot shot. Tags that one to Michael Young. One up, one down, and next up is Casilla.
Kobe had a start earlier in the season in Minnesota. Against the Twins he lost two to one another game where didn't have a lot of support. Six innings five hits and two runs in that ball game. At home this year he's had 10 starts. And they've gone really well. Another chance for Michael Young back to back pitches. He's able to take care of balls hit in the. Various states of height. One was a line drive that one a foul out. Kobe at home is five and three with an ERA under three. And I think that's one of the nice things about the Rangers starting pitching staff. As they've had a lot of success pitching in this ballpark. Kobe CJ Tommy Hunter. Have all pitched really well in our park. Combine that with the fact that the Rangers hit well in this park and pretty nice combination. Well, for years of course the Rangers had to out hit their pitching especially in this facility. But you're right Tom the fact that they're a home ERA. This year has been so low. It kind of takes the pressure off. Overall the Rangers ERA has been top five in the league pretty much since the end of. April. Chance for this to be the lowest team ERA in about 20 years. Rangers enter tonight fourth in the league, 3.89. And the Twins have an interesting little daily double working. They are number one in the league in both batting and fielding. Towards center, there's Bourbon on the move. He's got it. Colby Lewis very quickly threw it here in the top of inning two. The Oakland A's be in town this weekend. Sunday, you can bring the whole family out. The Coca-Cola Total Family Ticket Plan for tickets for hot dogs, for Cokes, a parking pass, sports park tokens, all for as little as 60 bucks. TexasRangers.com to get your tickets. That's sponsored by 98.7 K-Log. Vlad Guerrero in with an 11-game hitting streak. Very quietly has put that together, Tag, because it still doesn't feel like he's really driving the ball the way he's capable of doing yet. I think the times where it's really felt like he was swinging the bat well, he was lining the ball into right center field. This time popping the ball in a shallow right center. He got jammed a little bit right there. Pavano threw the sinker and got it in on his fists a little bit. Well, you talked about it with Pavano, a guy that certainly goes at you, doesn't walk many people. 
has only allowed one home run in his last 41 innings. And he's got the cool Ron Guidry from 1978 mustache. Well, he's really made a nice comeback in his career. His last good year was 2004. Really good year. He was 18 and 8 for Florida. We talked about the four years with the Yankees. Then last year he split the season between Cleveland and Minnesota. He had a winning record. He was 14 and 12, but his ERA combined was over five through 200 innings. But he's really put it together this year. He's pitching a lot like he did six years ago for Florida. We talk a lot about Josh Hamilton since the first of June. Well, for Pavano since the first of June, he's 11 and two. ERA barely over three. And that about sums it up for Murphy right there. A very consistent performer this entire month of August. Yeah, I don't think anybody in August has had more big hits for the Rangers than David has. And started on that road trip up there in Seattle at the front of the month. A couple of huge home runs against Seattle. Big hit last night in the first inning. Pavano doesn't walk very many, but Murphy kind of stares him down and earns that one, bringing up Benji Molina. Matt Trainer got the start yesterday. And for a guy that hadn't played in a month, not too bad, almost catching a no hitter. But Molina will be the probably four day a week catcher for Ron Washington as we go forward. Trainer will be worked in, and then once the roster's expanded, Taylor Teagarden is up. That will give the Rangers a three catcher situation. Benji will still get the majority of those starts. Now last year, Pavano allowed 33 steals. That was the most in the AL. He's got a shot to allow the most again here in 2010. Yeah, big contrast from last night. As we talk about the home run ball, that's close, but it's caught by Kubel. Yeah, it looked like Benji might have gotten enough of it to slice it down the right field line, but. Didn't quite get enough. Huh? Hit pretty well, though. Now we mentioned Pavano has only allowed one homer in his last 41 innings, almost 42 now. But obviously, earlier this year, the baseballs were jumping on him, and not so much at home. That uh, new ballpark they've got in Minnesota, tag from what we saw, plays pretty fair. Almost a Seattle kind of thing. Yeah, I really enjoyed being there in Minnesota. I love their new ballpark. Nick Blackburn last night you're talking about stolen bases he hardly ever gives up a stolen base. Well Mitch Moreland continues to perform Jorge Cantu can't get on the field. He's been slumping a bit and Moreland keeps hitting the ball well at confluence right there is led to a, a situation where you've got an almost everyday first baseman now. You didn't think that would necessarily be the case with Mitch Moreland. Well, this time of year, it's about performance. There's no scholarships this time of year. <laughs> and Jorge's got a track record, but right now, he's not hot. And Mitch has been swinging a pretty good bat. Uh, it may happen where Jorge gets a chance to get in the lineup, goes four for four. Ron gives him another start. He goes two for four, and he stays in the lineup. But right now, it's Mitch's turn. Kind of like Murphy and Bourbon. Not yeah, Murphy just won that job. Possible to take him out. Murphy breaks to second base. He saw the ball in the dirt. Down to second, he goes. Again, it's Butera, not Mauer, behind the plate tonight.
sometimes with the sinker. Obviously, you get that ball in the dirt, but believe it or not, that's only the second wild pitch all year. No, it's going to be a stolen base, I guess. From, nope. What do we got? I don't think he went till the ball was in the dirt. It is a wild pitch. Got to be a wild pitch, yeah. That change is strike up. three. Real nice change up. Yeah, officially a wild pitch, second of the year for Pavano. And the Rangers can't get Murphy in after that. It stays 2 0. on car insurance, also by AT&T. See what's new from AT&T, go to att.com and buy Carter Blood Care. That's kind of a tough look, also kind of a, boy, I hope I get a foul ball look right there. Rangers and the Twins are playing on a decent enough weather night on a Tuesday night. Had some rain all around the Metroplex today at various points, but we are cleared and good to go tonight. Second time through the order for Minnesota against Colby Lewis. Colby does not have a strikeout yet tonight. These twins don't really strike out that much as a team. But if Colby does get himself, it's not going to take a lot tonight if he gets to five strikeouts tonight. He will have, believe it or not, the most strikeouts by a Texas Ranger in 11 years. Aaron Seeley in 1999 at 158. Right now, 154 for Colby Lewis. And since the year 2000, Kevin Millwood's the only guy to get to 157. It's weird with Nolan Ryan in charge that over the last 10 years, nobody's gotten past 157. Obviously, Nolan hadn't been on the job for all that long, and it's not like he can go out there and pitch for these guys anyway, but the strikeout used to be such a big deal in Arlington, Texas. Go back to before Nolan even. One and one the count to Hudson. Fergie Jenkins had a 225. Charlie Huff even had a, a 223. Nolan had the 301 to set the franchise mark in 1989. And he followed up in 1990 with 232 and 91. He had 203. Nobody's been close to 200 since then. And for a lot of the pitchers, they're not throwing as many innings as the guys used to throw. They might be, might be around 200 innings. With Nolan, it didn't really matter. He was striking out way more than nine, one per inning. But for a lot of the guys, instead of throwing 230, 240 innings, if 
Fergie threw more than that. There are more around 200 innings. So even if you strike out a batter per inning, you're going to have a hard time getting much over 200. Unless you're just a really Randy Johnson, Nolan Ryan type strikeout pitcher. Not many of those are around though. Hudson rolls one foul. The Twins did achieve six walks in the game yesterday. Kind of fighting through and fouling pitches away like this. Ron Garden hires team is scrappy, top to bottom. Ozzy Guillen a couple of years ago called him a bunch of piranhas. Taken, that's it. Strike three. Nice pitch. That was his cover that he brought back to the outside corner for his first strikeout. Hudson's going to think it's outside until right there. He just comes back and came close to touching that outside corner. One of those that can go either way. That one went Kobe's way. Now Joe Mauer. The man who messed up the no hit bid last night. Back to Rich Harden, Tom. The last time he had pitched for the Rangers, he was knocked out in the third inning in Oakland. Went down on that rehab assignment after a brief stay on the DL. Nice, game. Com nice combination right there. One on the outside, one on the inside. I was probably thinking that's a pretty big plate tonight if both of those are strikes. Two well located pitches, probably both of them just barely catching. The corner on each side of the plate. Mauer on 0 and 2, as he did last night, hits it solidly, but this time right out of fielder. And Colby Lewis is set down seven straight after that double by Kadire. It stays 2 nothing. Verizon Wireless Fireworks Fridays, and this coming Friday, $10 tickets available, $5 parking. As the Rangers and the A's play ball, post-game fireworks set to one-hit wonder theme music. TexasRangers.com for tickets, enter Verizon as a coupon code. Sponsored by Jack FM. Blanco zaps one in the center field, sending Denard Span racing back. Blanco coming as close as he has come. To take him one out. That's one of those balls that Josh Hamilton made the same contact. It was about three quarters of the way up in the stands. Andre has hit that ball as well as he can to the 404 sign. Hit it almost 400 feet right on the button. There's a lot of room out there. Span just runs it down at the warning track.
Now Borbone, who is five for seven lifetime against Pavano. They're earning a start against him tonight. Be a heck of a way to get to six for eight against him. Spin. It happens. Well, I was just going to say that Corbon has really improved his bunting to where he's beaten out a couple of bunts. And that wasn't a bunt, but it looked like one. Now the Rangers continue to lead in infield hits, which is so new to all of us who have followed this team for a while. Between Corbon and Andrews, even Josh Hamilton. He hit that ball right off the end of the bat, and the spin took it from the chalk all the way in about a foot and a half inside the foul line. That's how much spin it had on it. Stolen bases allowed and home runs allowed. Those are two big deals for Carl Pavano. Rangers don't have a home run yet before Bone certainly a candidate to run. I'll tell you another big deal, Josh. What's that? Katie Slusarski sent us up some cupcakes today. She's here at the ball game. She says she's been to seven games this year and the Rangers have lost every one. Well, <laughs> well staying home and baking cupcakes then sounds like yeah. an okay plan. But she's here with her mom, Becky Slosarski. Thanks, ladies, for the cupcakes. They're from Sanger, Texas. Those were a delicious compliment to the tacos that we were festooned with tonight. Our good friends Derek Ort and Randy Day, the great Randy Day, supplying uh, our entire crew almost with tacos tonight. Very delicious. Thank you, guys. From a local boutique taco establishment. We also need to thank Sheila Thompson. She went to England and she was thinking about us while she was in England so much so that she brought back bangers a couple of pounds of English chocolate oh, for us. Right. Two of her grandsons delivered them for her. Thank you very much Sheila. Hope you're watching tonight. She lives in Allen, Texas. I'm beginning to wonder how like fish and chips would have traveled and kept for so long. No, she's the one who brought you. What's that kind of chocolate you like? Oh, the arrow bars? Yeah, she's the one that brought you the arrow bars. Yes, well, I am so in on that. Thank you so much for the arrow bars. That she, is the I don't best know chocolate she, bar going. If she knew that was your favorite, but. She, well, yeah. She does now. That's a good candy bar right there. Thank you. In the right base hit, Andrews. Yeah. A 14 game hitting streak for Elvis. Barbone to third. Ball getting away. Elvis hangs out at first. Elvis do that and then think that he's only 22 years old. The way he's already able to handle the bat just speaks to what he's going to be able to do as the years go by. He takes advantage of that hole between first and second. First baseman, Kadaya, is holding the run around. You've got that big hole and he just shoots it right by him and allows Bourbon to go to third base and gives Michael a chance to knock in a run. Get the Rangers one run closer. Michael struck out in the first inning. The batting average has been idling right around 290 now for about a week and a half, two weeks. Used to seeing Michael in the 300s. Talk about just taking things for granted. I mean, it's not like 290 is a bad batting average, but. Six of the last seven years, Michael has been above 300. His career batting average coming in this year, 302. And it's about, almost about that time where Michael's about due to really put on one of his hot streaks, and when he does, he can zip right by 300. That seems to happen about every August into September. You combine that with hopefully Vladdy having a hot streak, getting Nelly and Ian back, and things are looking pretty good for the offense. Towards second base. Run is in. That's got to run. That's good base running by Elvis. If Elvis runs into the tag and they turn a double play, 
then that run doesn't count. Because they had to throw to first first to get the out, it doesn't become a force play, and the run counts. That's just excellent base running right there by one of the youngest guys on the team. A 21-year-old smart guy gets the Rangers a run. It's 2-1. If you'd like to learn more about Chevy's commitment to Youth League Baseball, just go to ChevyTexasBaseball.com. Well, the Twins scored twice on a sinking line drive by Michael Kadir back in the first inning. Elvis Andrews just bought the Rangers a run in the bottom of the third. Getting himself caught in a rundown. And that's all that run was. That's Elvis's run right there. He's the one that took advantage of the hole and stroked the ground ball to right field to get Borbone to third and then his base running play allowed the run. Even in the big leagues you see so many guys just run right into that double play. They run right into the tag. Second baseman throws to first for a double play. No run scores. Jason Kubel the cleanup man for Ron Garden hires twins. Garden hire a well respected manager. As Colby Lewis dumps one down and Kubel swings up over top of it. It's tough to believe. I think we've said this before, Tom, that with all that he's accomplished, Garden hire, what, five division titles the last eight years. Staggering that he's never won manager of the year. He's been runner up five times, but never the winner. He could be runner up again this year no matter what happens because Ron Washington's looking like he might have that thing. Ron Garden hire a native Oklahoman. He played his college ball at the University of Texas after playing a bit at Paris Junior College. He's still got the team record at UT for most runs batted in in one game. In there to strike out Jason Kubel. You can't think that that was a ball. Unless I wasn't watching. Sure looked like a strike. I'm going to say that's definitely a strike. We go to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Josh. Mike Elliott of the U.S. Army parachute team. Golden Knights on hand tonight, and they parachuted into the ballpark before the game. Windy conditions. All the Golden Knights landed safely, except one got caught on the flagpole. What happened? 
Well, um, it's a challenge to a very unique challenge to land into a stadium. Um, the Windsor County erratic tonight. They were a little, you know, squirrely inside of the stadium. Um, we got a little bit behind the power curve, but he's safe. He's standing right here behind me, so he, he did a great job. And the one would be John. John, you a okay, right? I'm perfectly fine. It was a uh, minor incident. We uh, recovered nicely, and here I am. There we go. You're looking good. And also, when uh, getting down from that, it just cut the harness and then. Get down from the Actually, pole. we have a, a cutaway release system, so he was kind of hung up on the pole. He kind of cut away, and he came down safely. All right, most difficult stadium to parachute in would be where? I, I would say this one's pretty difficult, yeah. of course, and Minute Maid Park is also a difficult stadium. But, you know, as Golden Knights, we pride ourselves on safety, and we take every precaution that's out there to make sure we do safe demonstrations. All went well. Appreciate it, Mike. Thank you very much. Everybody safe. Josh? Thank you, Jim. Boy, that was scary. Maybe not to them, but it was scary to us watching it. I would have had a hard time just standing on the ledge up there on top of that scoreboard, let alone be hooked to the pole by your parachute. Boy, no kidding. Better run those guys some of those tacos <laughs> or cupcakes. Make them feel a little better. Delvin Young will come up, and for Colby Lewis, after that double that, again, was very close to being caught. It has been nine up, nine down. Yeah, and Kadir just kind of looped that double in front of Bourbon. Wasn't hit that hard. And just couldn't quite get to it. Again, Colby Lewis in pursuit of win number 10. This has been a pursuit that's been just going nowhere despite his good work. The seventh try at win number 10. And Tom, you mentioned it. The last, well, seven games now, the Rangers have come up with eight runs total. Yes. Only, only five when he's actually been in the game. He can only pitch as well as he can, and it's been great. Just tough to win when you're not getting any runs. I'm sure the, the hitters feel bad about that. It's just a coincidence. But one of the problems Kobe's had is the other pitcher he's been matched up in many cases has been outstanding. Trevor Cahill twice. On the ground off of Michael Young. One Young hits it to the other Young. Have to take a look at the replay and see if it took a tricky hop or exactly what happened there. But Delman Young is on first base. That was a well hit ball. Michael is going to get to the ball. He's going to go off his glove and that's kind of one up to the scorekeeper how he sees that ball. He is going to say E5. Good look with the Exmo camera. There's a strike to Danny Valencia who lined it to Michael Young back in the second. The Twins are leading the AL Central by four and a half. The White Sox are closest competition. Well, the Tigers though, are starting to play pretty well. Seems like every time they're at home that happens. They're winning seven nothing tonight. And Johnny Damon has told the Boston Red Sox, no thank you. He's staying put after he was claimed on waivers by the Red Sox. No return of Johnny Damon to Fenway. Yeah, he's probably tired of getting booed in Boston. Doesn't want to <laughs> go back there. Although I'm sure he'd be cheered if he did go back. Once he left Boston to go to New York, he was not a real popular uh, player when he came to Fenway. And the Red Sox fans can apologize for all that booing all they want to, but. What did Costanza say that one time? Stick your sorries in a sack, mister. <laughs> he says. I like it fine in Detroit. I'm going to play this thing out right where I am. On appeal, yes, he did. It's one and two. Marvin Hudson down there. And there's a good call. 
verified by our replay. Inside, Valencia jumps out of the way. Valencia was a kid that came up, is a kid that came up through the Twins organization. 19th round draft choice, University of Miami. Great college program. Had 1,800 minor league at bat, so he served an apprenticeship in the minor leagues in every level of the way he hit. This is a good start, just an extension of an outstanding minor league career. Not highly touted coming into the draft, but he's passed a lot of guys who were picked a lot higher than he was. Well, on third base has been a position that the Twins have kind of cycled on through ever since Corey Koski took off. A little bit outside. And Corey Koski's last season with Minnesota was 2004. And a foul. To do the 3 2 again. Casillo waits on deck. Again, the runner goes, and there is a high fly ball down the left field line. Hamilton has got it, and Colby Lewis off the mound and out of the inning. Hamilton in the lead off when we come back. For tonight. Since 1940, only two pitchers have won major league games before the age of 20 and after the age of 40. What a great question. Who are these people? Answer coming up when we get to the top of the fifth. Hamilton unloads. Left center field. It goes to the track. It is gone. Strong to hit a ball 400 feet. That basically just sliced the line drive 400 feet. 
Most guys hit that same ball. It might go in the gap and roll to the warning track. Josh is strong enough to where he sliced it right on out of the ballpark. Waiting on the ball. Doing such a great job of going the other way. That pitch is on the inside part of the plate. He's still inside out of it, out of the ballpark. Guerrero follows by dribbling one towards second base. For Hamilton, home run number 29, RBI number 90, batting average now 359. Very MVP ish. Nice grab in X mode. There's no Mickey Mouse home run either. Firing it over the wall in left. So dead even now after the Rangers fell behind 2 0. And sadly, Tom, for the Cobra, for Colby Lewis, this passes for a lot of run support. <laughs> well, he got beat 2 to 1 in Minnesota the last time he played the Twins, so at least that's not going to happen. Fouled by Murphy. Same two teams go at it tomorrow night and Thursday night. The Rangers will be loading up with the lefties the next two evenings. C.J. Wilson and Cliff Lee, their ERAs are 3.02 and 3.09 respectively. Rip and a miss. Out number two, we go to Dana Larson. Well, as you guys have been talking about, the players certainly have felt bad about the lack of run support for Colby Lewis. I can barely get Colby's name out of my mouth today, let alone the question before Josh Hamilton just finished my thought. This is better. Whatever reason, we don't put many numbers on the board. Uh, so, you know, I feel responsible uh, sometimes for that. And, uh, you know, it's just... He explained to me that's the way it was in Japan too. He, you know, be two to one ball games or one zero ball games or whatever. So hopefully in September we can change that. Josh has said he's even apologized to Colby Lewis on nights where things didn't go well. But uh, as you just saw there, that monster home run, no apology needed as uh, he tied this game right back up, Josh. Thanks, Dane. It's funny how, you know, it's become a running joke how Hamilton always homers when Tommy Hunter pitches. And it really is uncanny how that happens. Now he is homered for Colby Lewis. And this is a 2-2 game. Molina on 0-2 is going to drive one. To the track. Oh, he tried to pull it. Molina to second base with an 0 2 double. And Kubel called off Span. Generally, you don't see the right fielder call off the center fielder. He called him off and then didn't get it. Well, that is a break for sure. Second well hit ball by Benji. Kubel ran one down toward the right field line. Watch Kubel put his hand out. I've got it. Span stops, and Kubel never got to it. Span's going, well, what's it tell me to stop for if you're not going to catch it? I think Kubel, by the way he reached for it, shied away from Span, who even though he was called off, didn't really peel out of the way, and I think Kubel kind of felt his presence there. Change up to start Mitch out was the pitch that he struck out on to end the second inning. Moreland on the ground, knocked down by Hudson, saving a run. They almost got the out. But to Dyer, not Morno, remember, at first base these days. He couldn't make that scoop, and that's twice in two games. We've seen Kadire come away scoopless. <laughs> that is an infield hit. Boy, Hudson's got range, huh? Yeah, Hudson gets to it, makes a beautiful play. 
and looks like he's in position to make the throw. He just threw it into the ground and Kadir couldn't scoop it. The Rangers got a couple of breaks right here, an infield hit and a double. I'd like to see Blanco get a base hit and pick one of them up. That would have been a nice play if Josh was on second base. He would have scored. Blanco gave one a ride at last inning. It's funny, we were saying at the time, well, you said it almost exactly, Tom, that boy, had Hamilton hit a ball out that way with his strength, it would have gone. And <laughs> sure enough, that actually did happen here in the fourth inning. Now Blanco up again. Yeah, if he got the same pitch, took the same swing, and made the same contact, Josh's ball would have gone about 450 feet because Andres really hit it well. Fastball by Pavano right where he wanted it on the inside corner. In on the hands and fought foul. Pavano flipped cross division last year from Cleveland to Minnesota. Ended up being a bit of a workhorse for the Twins in their playoff run. They're going to lean on him again hard here in 2010. Blanco powers up. Right center field. That ball taken off. Bouncing out of here. So it's an automatic double. And that. Robs Andres of what would have been another RBI. He'll settle for one instead of two. On his fifth double of the year, the Rangers lead 3-2. Yeah, and I need to apologize to Andres. I said the ball that he hit the first time up was his best shot. And <laughs> well, then he hit that one about 15 feet farther, 402 or 3 feet right to the 407 sign in right center field. He's hit two of his best bolts of the year. And you're right, he did get a bad break. If that short hops the wall, the Rangers pick up a couple of runs instead of only one. But, I mean, just in fairness to everyone involved here, this would be like if Alexei Casilla from Minnesota came out here tonight and rifled a couple of baseballs like that. It's not that he's not capable. Every once in a while that does happen, but it's a, it's a rarity. And certainly to, to have it twice in two innings is highly unusual. Andres is just trying to take advantage of his opportunity and be able to stay in the lineup on a pennant contending team. That's a pretty nice, pretty nice opportunity for Andres. Ian will be back sooner or later, but in the meantime, Andres is doing his best to make a difference, and nice to see him do that. How do you like three straight two out hits, by the way? I like that. How do you like four bones? Not as much as I'd like four, though. Well. I was going to say, Borbone, six out of eight lifetime against Pavano, a candidate to make that happen. He's got the first baseman back, and he could conceivably give that drag bun a try. Well, and, and if we said Kadir is not a guy that's got a lot of experience at first. And if you make Kadir field it as he's moving to the right, I don't think Pavano can beat Borbone to the bag. A nice way to pick up a run. Takes and it's 2 0. The Rangers have excelled in this situation pretty much all year. Get the big hit with two out. On 2 0, sharply hit the right to Hudson. The Rangers settle for a 3 to 2 lead. Hamilton started it with a home run the other way. It's 29th. And the Rangers lead by one.
AT&T trivia question, a real good one tonight. Since 1940, the two pitchers who have won games before the age of 20 and after the age of 40. One of them in the ballpark tonight, sitting to our left. There is the great Burt Blylevin. Oh, a brief shot of the almost as great Evan Grant in the background there passing by. That was cool, too. But one of the Hall of Fame snubs, one of the top of all time, actually, in my opinion, number five or six now, I guess, on the all time major league strikeout list. 287 wins, and for some reason, not in Cooperstown. But another story for another time. We got Mark McLemore in the booth with us here in the top of the fifth inning. We'll talk a little Rangers live promotion as Colby Lewis missing here to Alexei Casilla. We'll catch Mac on Rangers live when the game is done, and hopefully Mac will have a chance to talk about a, an exciting come from behind Ranger win. I think I will. Uh, Rangers are starting to swing the bats and getting to Carl Pavano a little bit. They had trailed two nothing on a ball that no, nah, it was a, a tough thing for Julio Borbon. The, the face first dive. Gave it a great shot, just couldn't come up with it. It's 2 nothing Minnesota. Well, the hardest ball for an outfielder to catch is the ball right at you. Uh, actually, for an infielder as well, So, because you really can't judge the arc on it or the speed in which it's coming at you. So it's a very difficult play to make, and that was a, a tremendous effort on Julio's part, but just uh, wasn't able to come up with it. On 2-2 two and two to Casilla. A little bit outside 3-2. and two. Hey, Mac, I know you are continually impressed by Elvis just like we are but that was a nice inning for him when he hit behind the runner and then pulled the base running play off you don't always see that with a 22 year old do you No, you know Elvis Elvis does so many things that you normally see out of a guy who's got 10 years in the big not a year and a half or almost two years he's just a tremendous ball player and um, I'm just looking forward to watching him continue to grow each and every day and, you know one of the things that, I, that I'm really Starting to like, especially over the last seven to ten days, is the fact that he's making the routine plays. He's had some ground balls hit to him, and you know they're routine balls, but those are some of the plays that he's had some problem, some problems with uh, this year and last year. And right now, I think he's really focusing and concentrating, and that's what uh, that's what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. The catcher trying to drop down a bunt. Whether or not it would have surprised anybody, I have no idea because it went foul. Well, I think it would have because Michael was pretty far back at third base. And just to finish the thought on Elvis, he will turn 22, fellas, on Thursday. The Ranger fans are looking to make a sign when they come out on Thursday. It's not a bad one. Wish a happy number 22 to your shortstop. Well, in that play, Mac, first and third, one out, ground ball, you're playing second. The play for the runner is to stop, so it's not a force play. When you were playing second, there were still runners in the big leagues who would run right into that double play, aren't there? Absolutely. So you had to be very careful uh, to not, uh, as a second baseman, to not get caught in them. You'd have uh, some guys that would play possum and stop, and you come mm -hmm. run at them, they turn, and, and they get you. I had a guy from Milwaukee, I can't remember his name, but uh, he actually stopped, turned around. I went to tag, and he turned right around and got up under my arms. And is that Vina that did that? Wasn't Vina. Vina wasn't, wasn't around quite. Now that's, that's, that, that's not an illegal play. It's not either, a legal play. He no. can pretty much do whatever he and wants he, to. Yeah. He leveled me. He put me flat on my back, and I was just so stunned because it had never happened before. So, huh. yeah, you have to be very careful. And it was a veteran player. Just sounded like something Vina would have done. So <laughs> now, when a, when a player takes the second baseman out on that kind of a play. Do the rest of your teammates say, hey, that's just a nice clean play? Whoa! Yeah. Borbone take two. This time the face first dive he got. It. He got it. You live and you learn. That one was hit a little bit harder and got to him. Mark McLemore will be on Rangers Live after the game. Mac, thank you, buddy. All right, baby. It's exciting to have been you. Nice clean <laughs> inning, Mac. There we go. One, two, three.
Rangers take on the Twins. It's a dollar hot dog night. It's also a Dr. Pepper autograph Wednesday. Ranger players and coaches signing autographs out in the concourse from 5.30 till 6. The game's at 7.05. Get your tickets by logging on to TexasRangers.com. Elvis Andrews hits that one in the hole. It's short. Casilla, long throw. Got a nice play. Something Andrews can appreciate. He's made that play a bunch himself. Yeah, Casilla got rid of the ball really quick. Well, a second baseman by trade, and I think that's the kind of quick transfer he just made right there. He had a little more arm strength than I thought he had from shortstop. So he not only fielded it cleanly and got rid of it quickly, he had a little something on it, too. Pretty nice play. Michael Young hit into the unconventional 4-3-6 double play in the third inning, but a run came in during that. Well, the Rangers have lost, believe it or not, 11 out of 17. But they've lost only a half a game off their division lead during that time. Leading by a comfortable eight and a half coming in tonight. Oakland does have a lead in Cleveland this evening, five to nothing. The A's are now a little closer to the Rangers than the Angels are. Strike to make it two and two. If you look at the A's and you look to the future, their task is pretty obvious. They've got the starting pitching, they've got the bullpen, they just have to get some hitters. And if they do, they're a contender. To get that guy some postseason action right there. He's in playoff baseball with Dad. The guy the A's probably wish they had was Carlos Gonzalez. Yeah. They traded him to Colorado. He's one of the best young players in the National League right now. Michael Young not easily going away here. Bono trying the fastball. Another one in the crowd. Well, the Twins and the Rangers we mentioned tomorrow and then again on Thursday. Minnesota moves on to Seattle after that. Pretty weird. <laughs> on Thursday and Friday, the Twins will face lefties with 10 and 7 records and a 3.09 ERA back to back. Cliff Lee and Jason Vargas have the exact same thing working right now. They were teammates to start the year in Seattle. Well, if they catch Felix Hernandez in Seattle, they would have had a road trip where going to Texas and Seattle, they've seen some good pitching. Man, oh man, it's going to be an 11 pitch at bat for Michael. We're going to face Colby and CJ on back to back days. Those are two of the top five in the corners batting ever. After all that, Michael Young drills it, but it's going to be caught. Boy. That was some battle right there. Finally, Pavano wins out. But let's see if maybe Michael Tucker to bat. Josh Hamilton's going to bat right now. Josh is already over. Tours uh, like pulled the hard last, last inning. He pretty much threw the ball right where Fowler's glove was on the inside part of the plate. Even though he made the pitch he wanted to, Josh still hit it for a home run. Josh is now nine for his last 19 with three home runs. That's after that one out of 16. Can't keep a good man down. He 
leading the majors in batting average now by 18 points. Josh has also now gotten it within a couple of home runs of second place in the American League. Doesn't look like anybody's going to catch Jose Bautista, who's now hit numbers 39 and 40. I don't even think Mrs. Bautista saw that coming this year. Got an outside chance of hitting 50. Took something off of Hamilton. He was down on the strikes. The Rangers at the end of five, leading three to two. One fifty for it is the best in Texas by Fred Loya Insurance for being local matters and by Resident Evil Afterlife in 3D in theaters September 10th. A much more pleasant night tonight, both weather wise and run production wise, as far as Colby Lewis is concerned. Colby, as we've been talking about tonight, has been averaging one run of support really over the last four weeks that he's pitched. Rangers got one form in the third, two in the fourth. And we could be talking about a 14 up, 14 down situation for Colby, the only base runner during that time. An error. This one, oh, that's fair. Just stayed right near the line, and that is legitimately, although barely, a leadoff double here for Minnesota. And Hudson now two for three. Joe Mauer will have a chance. Mauer one for two. About 19 times out of 20, he takes the first pitch. Over the last few years, those stats have been borne out. Franchise player in a position that's seen only one hitter of his caliber in the last 50 or 60 years. And Mike Piazza was not nearly the defensive catcher that Joe Maurer is. On the ground, third base holding the runner is Michael Young. High throw! Maurer is safe. It's going to be two on on the second error of the night charged to Michael Young. That's too bad because the Rangers were going to get an out right there without Maurer being able to move the runner over to third base. Just a throw that got, got away from Michael. Ball gets to him quickly. He's got plenty of time. 
He just throws it high. Mauro would have been out by 15 feet. When Moreland almost dragged that toe over the corner of the bag, too. But it does set up a double play. The Twins have hit into a lot of double plays. Kubel's hit into 14 of them. Kadir's hit into 20. Mauer's hit into 18. They've hit into like 35 more double plays than their opponents. And Colby Lewis, you talked about this earlier tonight, Tom, when there are runners in scoring position. There are few in baseball any tougher. A drive to right field, David Murphy going back. Heels on the track, he makes that catch. Hudson will tag and go to third. You had to hold your breath for a minute. That's a cleanup hitter getting into one on a jet stream kind of a night, but it did not get out. And now one of those double plays you're talking about, tag, he kind of saved the bacon. He's got Kadires in, oh, somewhere in the top five in double plays. He's hit into 20 of them. I don't think Kubel got all of that ball, fortunately. But it would have been nice if if Michael had made the play and he hit the same ball. No guarantee the same thing would happen. But <clears throat> if it did, now you've got a man on third base tagging up, but there'd be two outs. Dyer did ground out the shortstop his last time up. So he'll try it again. Fouls it into the crowd. There's the double play list. Billy Butler, 26 double that, plays. That's wow. a lot. A month left. The only thing you're looking for, maybe if you're Kobe, is a strikeout right here. Is not a big strikeout guy, though. There's the ground ball towards short. There's one, there's two. Thank you very much. But he has to play any better than that. But he set it up beautifully. Colby Lewis had to execute, and he did. A twin killing. And it stays 3 2. Two at Sonic. Good luck to LaFay McCarter of Eustace over the Bulldogs. If a Ranger hits the Grand Slam this inning, we're giving away $25,000. You can register at any North Texas Sonic restaurant. We are reminded by someone in our television truck please drive carefully when going through Eustace. Drive gently.
Rangers three, Minnesota two. A lot of Washington said at the start of this series, a split is kind of the bare minimum. Two out of four. You'd love to see three or four out of four. And at the very least, the Rangers are off to a nice start. They won yesterday almost with a no hitter. And tonight, Wash against his former team. Leading three to two, they had to come from behind to get it done. Wash played for the Twins 1981 through 1986. Released right at the end of spring training in 87 by Minnesota, catching on with the Orioles about a week later. Taking a third base, quick throw by Valencia to get Blatty. Wash spent that 1987 season with the Orioles AAA team in Rochester, New York, and that is now the Twins AAA team. The Twins have picked over that team pretty amazingly. All the talent they had down there is pretty much now up here. Which leads to a triple-A team being about 35 or 40 games under 500. Murphy grounds out, and that's unusual for Minnesota. They're minor league teams year after year. If you add it all up throughout their organization, they win just about every season. It's important, right, when you don't have the money to go out and spend a lot on free agents. you got to have that pipeline producing. Yeah, I think the ideal thing is... Well, number one, you want to develop players in the minor leagues for your big league team, and you would love to do it in a winning environment. That's kind of the best of both worlds. Develop the young players, sprinkle some veterans on your minor league teams that help you win on the positions where you might not have a young prospect. Give a little experience to the minor league teams so that the young players develop into big league players and do it on winning teams. Molino hoisting one to left. A six-pitch inning for Pavano. Remember, Michael Young had it. Got a 12-pitch at bat all by himself last inning. Three to two at the end of six. by your Texas Chevy dealers, proud sponsor of Texas baseball. And by Verizon Wireless, own the airwaves, rule the air. Colby Lewis trying once again to win his 10th of the year. Keeps getting matched up against quality competition. Carl Pavano, a 15-game winner, is on the other side of things tonight. But the Rangers are beating Pavano right now, 3-2. Michael Kadire hit into a double play to end things in the sixth. Now Dolman Young will start up here in the seventh. Been a four-hitter for Colby Lewis tonight. And three of them came in the first inning. And the fourth one was a little blue double by Hudson in the sixth inning. That was a leadoff double that Colby stranded. Well, 
here's the deal. Going back to yesterday, Tom, this the best hitting team in the majors, Minnesota Twins. They've got five hits total in 15 innings here in Arlington. Good pitching. Off the plate here to Delman Young. His potential finally being realized this year. 88 runs batted in. Jim Wolf fires that ball back. Jim, I think he's got the best arm of all the umpires. <laughs> well, Jim's brother is Randy Wolf, pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. We'll see Jim Wolf fire another one here. Nope, he's going to give it to Benji. Benji he's lobs it back. Jim Wolf and Doug Eddings would be my not that the, probably have any stats on this, but of the of the umpires in the league, those two tend to really just take a lot of joy in showing off their fastballs. Andrews got a fire. The scoop, no, Marlin couldn't pick it. Kobe made a good pitch just to get it out. A breaking ball. Young hit it slowly. Right off the end of the bat. Bobby scored a base hit. You got a no, not necessarily a homer threat, but certainly a doubles threat coming up. And a guy that occasionally can pop him out, Danny Valencia. Wouldn't be a bad time for another one of those double plays. Well, Valencia has hit into 10 double plays in 53 games, so his rate of double plays is even higher than Kadir's. By the way, the A's still leading in Cleveland 5 0, bottom nine. The A's will be here over the weekend. And Minnesota leads the American League in double plays by a pretty good margin. Runner goes. And that ball nailed in the right. Murphy's up with it, firing. Cut off. Runners at the corners now. And Colby's going to have to do his fanciest step into the whole night. Well, it's a shame the way that all got going. He made his pitch, like you said, Tom, to, to Delman Young. And a throw that was in the dirt from Elvis, unable to be scooped by Moreland. And they do a nice little job of hit and run right there. Valencia lines it into right field. Got a pitch breaking ball up. Conversation on the mound. We go to Dana Larson. Yes, this is a good time to remind everyone to visit our website. It is FoxSportsSouthwest.com. We're very Ranger-centric there, but also a little heavy on football right now as well. We'll have a Q&A with Texas A&M's defensive coordinator and a lot of Cowboys talk there. They've got some work yet to do, according to Keith Whitmire and Austin Miles. Is he a valuable commodity just yet? You can read about all of that and much more. Of course, we'll have all the Rangers post-game interviews and analysis. It's FoxSportsSouthwest.com. Tom, Josh. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Dana. There's Darren Oliver getting ready in the Ranger pen. The pitch count for Colby Lewis at 93. Which is exactly when he left the game most recently when he pitched that game in Baltimore. Young in on the grass at third. Casilla the batter. This is the bottom of the order. Eight and nine now with Casilla and Butera. Get a little strikeout or a pop out here from Casilla. See if you can encourage Butera to hit him into one of those double plays. That would be a successful tiptoeing through the minefield for Mr. Lewis. A drive instead by Casilla. Not known for that. Hits the top of the wall. Murphy's got to chase it. The game now tied, and they're going to hold that potential go ahead man at third. Boy, Blanco and Casilla, the two guys that if you had to put all the names in a hat and say who are the two least likely guys to drive them off the wall. They've both done it tonight. <laughs> the 
fastball got a little more of the plate I think than Kobe wanted to. See a put a pretty good swing on it. Garcia only had two homers last year. One of them was here. Off of Scott Feldman. He only has one this year and that one almost got out. It's now 3 3 second and third infield in. Butera the catcher. Will take a strike. Boy, and after the double play ended a threat last inning. Kind of a soft infield hit to start this rally. Next inning in the seventh. Again, that low throw from Elvis Andrews, the inability to scoop it by Moreland. Not an easy play for either man, but. That play was not made. Valencia follows with a hit. Casilla with a double off the wall. One ball, two strikes. Again, the infield right into the grass. For him, he hit it right at Michael Young. Well, once again, a Ranger pitcher pitches very well out of the starting blocks, but cannot get out of the seventh inning. It's going to do it for Colby Lewis. Ron Washington on his way out. And once again, Colby, despite pitching well, is not going to get a win. He'll leave with a no decision right now. Darren Oliver has been summoned. The crowd appreciates the Cobra. Carroll is called to the bullpen, finding the veteran Darren Oliver stepping in, inheriting second and third and just one out. And Denard Span, top of the order, coming up. Darren's ERA has jumped from about 1.4 to 2.54 over the last month or so. But obviously, the overall Darren Oliver experience this year has been very positive. The infield will stay in. Span is a guy that handles the bat from that top spot in the order very well. He's a guy that doesn't strike out very much and does a pretty good job against left handed pitching. 0 for 3 lifetime against Oliver. First one is away. Right. 
They go righty, lefty, lefty after this. No action in the Ranger bullpen. It's Oliver for the next few hitters. Two balls, no strikes. And for Colby Lewis, the best he can hope for now is a no decision. Seven straight starts. He's pitched well in seven straight starts. He's been un unable to get that tenth win of the year. Into the crowd. Now the Twins will need to get used to facing lefties because they're going to get Cliff Lee and C.J. Wilson the next couple nights. Not in that order. C.J. goes tomorrow. Well, C.J. was brilliant in that start. And he just made in Baltimore, striking out 12. Obviously for Cliff Lee, it did not go nearly as well in Baltimore. Tagged for four home runs. The two lefties, one of them coming off their, their best ever start, the other one coming off one of their worst. A little bit inside, three and one. Looked a little bit inside, but not by much. Could have gone either way. Didn't get the call on that one. Towards first, Moreland can come home with it. Low throw to lead his tag and down there we go. Nice play by Moreland, too. It wasn't an easy pickup, and then he had a fire on strike quickly to Molina, who applied the tag, and they get that run at the plate. Nice play. Moreland had a short out to take, but he didn't he didn't want that. He wanted the, the challenge of keeping this game tied. It took a real nice tag at the end, too. You're right about the pickup. A little short hop here. A nice, strong throw. And remember, he was a pitcher in college. And he showed it right there. He pretty much threw a pitch to the plate with something on it. Yep, he threw a sinker at the ankles of the incoming runner. Well handled by Molina. Valencia cut down. It's now first and third, two out. And it's Oliver against Hudson. A nice jam to get out of right here. If Darren can get Hudson right here, it would have been a run in, second and third, and nobody out. You know, one more out to get, though. Keep it a tie game. The guy that has given Darren some trouble, though, in the past. Three for four is Hudson off D.O. Rams one by him. It's 0 and 2. So you're talking about a run in, second and third, and nobody out. And a chance to wiggle out of it. Runner was breaking it from third on that throw to first, and Casilla back in time. I think what Casilla was doing is just getting a head start in case the throw bounced, in case it was a hard throw to handle. He would have scored. If he kept on going. He would have been out by 10 feet, though. On 0 2. Down and in. The try went for the strikeout with that breaking ball. It's a tempting pitch. The way it starts out, but Hudson kind of knew where it was going to finish.
Harper, second base, Blanco waiting, tricky hop, got it! Second and third and nobody out, and the Rangers survive. They do not give up the lead, we're at the stretch. Tied at three. We go to Jim Knox. All right, thanks, Josh. Time for the progressive fan of the game. It has to be... Kylie, Kirsty. Because they're twins and they came with these great posters. So here's the bag. Here's the hat. Here's the, here's the shirt. Anything you want to say? Uh, uh, yeah, say it together. There you go. Congratulations, <laughs> girls. Enjoy the rest of the game. I get it. They're twins in the room. For, see what they did there, Tech? I did. Yeah. Even I got that oh. one. <laughs> I don't get many of them, but I got that one. Boy, they are definitely twins, too. Wow. The Rangers against Carl Pavano in the bottom of the seventh. Knotted up 3-3 now. And Mitch Moreland, who made a real nice defensive play to help keep it tied up. Leading off against this veteran right-hander. Pavano has only needed 76 pitches. Here he is in the seventh inning. A little better than the 15 hitter he fashioned his last time out. He's held the Rangers down to six tonight. Moreland cranks one into center field. Denard Span will pick it off the green. Well, that's too bad. All he did was hit that ball too hard. That was a rope. And it just kept on going far enough for Span to come in and make a nice play. Hard hit ball. Well, we've seen both center fielders tonight. Span and Borbone dive to make a catch on a, a low liner. All right, here's Muscles. Here's Andres Blanco, who's really pegged a couple tonight. Yeah, actually, he hit the second one too far. If he hit it about five feet shorter, it would have bounced on the grass, stayed in the ballpark, and been a two-run double instead of hitting a warning track and bouncing out of the ballpark that's actually, for a one-run double. Yeah, and now in a 3-3 game, it's kind of a big thing that happened right there. The Rangers couldn't get that, that extra run in. Moreland is stranded at third. Well, Colby Lewis ended up throwing 99 pitches tonight. And it's another one of those quality starts. Six or more innings, three runs or fewer. You just chalk him up. 
every game for one of those quality starts. But the actual wins have been tough to come by. Blanco to left, chipping it nicely towards the line and hit the line. And once again, an automatic double as it bounces out of here. Blanco's got the double stroke going tonight. Hit a long fly ball that might have been a double, but Span ran it down. That double was a lot like the one that Hudson hit in the sixth inning. And Hudson was on second, chatting it up with Blanco after his double. And now Blanco gets the same thing to do with Hudson. Boy, just going the other way with it, and it hit the very corner down there. It did. That ball couldn't have been one inch fair. <laughs> They're both saying we were lucky, but mine was more fair than yours. Bourbon had the infield hit in the third, and he bounced out in the fourth. Chopped hard, Kadire racing to the bag. Oh, and Bourbon diving head first is out. Blanco to third base, leaving the inning to Andrews. That was a well hit ball. Unfortunately, it was right at Kadire. Takes a hop, but he's able to, able to kind of bury it and just barely beat Bourbon to the back. Well, here's a situation in which Elvis Andrews has excelled all year. Two outs and runners in scoring position. Blanco is wandering down the line at third. Got that third baseman Valencia playing even with the bag. Just in case Elvis thinks about dropping down a two out bunt. Michael Young next. It's 2 0 to Andrews. Minnesota pen, though the Rangers have some now. Taking, and now three and one. Take a walk. Cavano doesn't allow too many of those. He walks one and a half per nine innings, so he's over his quota for the day. Michael Young, who had that long at bat last time against Pavano, and it looked like he might have won out, but his drive was caught in right center field. Rick Anderson out to talk to Pavano and company. And Tom, I think you're right about Michael Young. I mean, this is the time of year usually when he takes off. Right now, he is just 18 for his last 90. Hitting around 200. In a position to produce right here. Two on, two out. Seven hits both ways tonight. Minnesota stranded five. The Rangers have stranded three. Michael in the left base hit. No doubt about that hit. Boy, that was a rope. And that is a Ranger lead of four to three. What a 
base hit with two outs right there. That's one of the real hallmarks of this team this year, delivering with two out. Twins could not get the hit in the top of the seventh. Second and third, nobody out. They couldn't get the hit. Rangers with two outs get the hit from Michael Young, and now they've got Josh up with a couple of men on. Huh? Chance to do some more damage. I'm putting in the call right here. Might as well keep that two-out conveyor belt running. All right. Hamilton already with a homer tonight. His next one will be number 30 for the year. Oh, and he was going for it, too. Pavano's throwing a number of change-ups to Josh. Jesse Crane in the Minnesota pen. Rangers have had Darren O'Day loosening. Same pitch, same result. It's not dare to challenge Josh for the fastball yet, but two on. Pops it up on 0 and 2. Good pitching right there. Two change-ups down and a fastball up and in. Hamilton could not produce, but Michael Young sure did. The Rangers lead the Twins 4-3. Mitch Moreland making this play coming home. Molina with a 10. Then Darren Oliver inducing Orlando Hudson to bounce to second base. Rangers then took the lead with a run in the bottom of the seventh. And now it's Oliver to Mauer. As we begin the eighth, Mauer, the guy who ruined the no hitter for the Rangers yesterday. You got two lefties, Mauer and Kubel, and then some righties. And that's why Darren O'Day is warming up down in the bullpen. Matt Harrison's getting ready with him. Mauer has never had a hit against Oliver, but Kubel is three for four against Aaron. Chop ball, Moreland has got it. Oliver heading there. He's got it. Stepping on the bag, one down. Nice play all the way around. Nice pickup by Mitch and Darren at 40 years old, still hustling over to first base. It's a little tougher for a left-hand pitcher to get there than a right-hand pitcher because they tend to fall off toward the third base side a little bit. They're going to all congregate on the mound, make sure Darren can catch his breath before the next hitter. 
Elvis is smiling. <laughs> he, Elvis How you doing there, old timer? Elvis will be 22 in a couple of days. <laughs> Jared's 18 years older than he is. Why don't you go back there, young pup? You know? <laughs> yeah, no wonder you don't get tired. <laughs> Again, Harrison and O'Day in that Ranger bullpen. Outfielders back a little bit for Kubel, giving him room in right center. Oliver pours in a strike. Crowd of a little more than 20,000 here on a Tuesday night tonight. Seeing a well pitched, well played game. I guess the one guy to keep in mind as you come to the bottom of the Twins order is Jim Tolman. Yep, available off the bench. And one thing the Rangers have, the Rangers have three lefties now in their bullpen. So they're in a little bit better shape to mix and match at the end of the game if that's what Ron Washington chooses to do. Five hundred eighty one career home runs for Tomey. Kubel got it off the end of the bat. And there's Borbon straight up in the center. Two down. And Darren Oliver. Remember, he came in in a really tough spot. In the second and third and just one out. He pitched out of that. Now he neutralizes Mauer and Kubel in the eighth. As Ron Washington comes to the mound, the fans are prepared to say thank you very much to Darren Oliver. Great job. O'Day's coming on. The other Darren will be pitching when we come back. Ball throughout the state of Texas. If you'd like to learn more about Chevy's commitment to youth league baseball, go to ChevyTexasBaseball.com. Well, the nearly infallible Darren O'Day is going to come on now for the 58th time this year. The opponent's batting average now 199. Only one home run allowed all year. Only 10 walks in that ERA. You need a microscope to find it. 1.44. And as you look toward the ninth, Neftali could be available. He pitched the last game in Baltimore. He pitched yesterday as well. Seemed like he threw a few pitches in Baltimore. Not quite as many yesterday. That's somewhere around 20 each time. We'll check on his availability. We should be able to find out pretty soon. And I see Alexei Agando stretching out there. O'Day wings it in there to Kadire. Oh. 
strike on the outside edge. I think it was a strike. Good try. Yeah, Kadire almost fished for it. The pitch before was a fastball right on the corner, and then that one was his slider. So it started out in the same spot and then curved outside, but Kadire was just able to lay off it. Ground second base, here's Blanco. Darren O'Day has done it again. The Rangers to the bottom of the eighth, leading four to three. Showing you the Rangers have played some defense tonight, even on a night where they have made a couple errors. Julio Borbon, a face-first dive. Tried to do that on Michael Kadire back in the first inning. And it skipped by him for two runs, but he was able to take care of Denard Span in the fifth. Now Vlad Guerrero leading off against Carl Pavano, bottom eight. The Rangers on top, four to three. They survived a scary... Top of the seventh inning, a run already in, second and third, nobody out. Hammered to third and picked up by Valencia. These Minnesota Twins, Tom, came here to Arlington, winners in 21 of their last 27. And the Rangers have a chance to go 2-0 against him. Looks like they will turn to Neftali Feliz in the ninth. Naftali has proven that he can do and that's pitch not just back-to-back -back days, but back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back days Unlike last night he will not have to face Joe Maurer Remember the twins with that uh, no hitter as a possibility yesterday in the ninth had the top third of the order up The eighth pitch of the night for Carl Pavano and on the hands of Murphy.
chance here to get all the way through the bottom of the eighth inning. Rangers have hoped to hand them a complete game loss. Rangers trying to make their move on these Minnesota Twins for the second best record in the American League. And that is the difference between home field advantage and not having it in that first round of the playoffs. To right field by Benji Molina. Right into that corner, it is foul. Benji hit the ball in the air today. Long fly ball to right that was caught. Long fly ball to right center that wasn't caught. And kind of a semi line drive to left center field. Taking a shot at the triangle down there. Pavano's got a chance to pitch through eight for the eighth time this year. Toward short, backing up onto the grass. There's Casilla to take care of Benji Molina. And now, with the Rangers on top, four to three, we go to the ninth here at the ballpark. Texas Ranger Baseball brought to you by the Progressive Insurance Group for a money-saving car insurance quote. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. And by the Ford F-150. Check out the 2010 F-150 and drive one. Ford is the best in Texas. Now let's turn it into a very nice night for baseball here in Arlington. Neftali Feliz trying to stick the landing. He has saved 31 out of 34. Could not save a no-hit bid last night. The Rangers did win the game with a shutout. They're trying to win this thing four to three. Delman Young to lead off. Well, they'll probably face Young and Valencia, and then Casilla is the third hitter, and that could possibly be Tommy, depending on what the circumstances with base runners happens to be. Jim Tomey with the helmet on, ready to be called on. Changed it up and just jumped it in there softly to make it one and two. Becomes double tough when he can drop that slider in for a strike. Most of the time the hitter takes it. Into right field, well struck. David Murphy back to the track. He's got it. 
has a good at bat right there for Delman Young. No balls and two strikes. Puts it in play with a little bit of authority. That that ball doesn't get put in play like that very often against Felice. A high fastball out of the strike zone. And Delman Young got on top of it and drove it all the way to the wall. David playing a little bit deeper than normal. Was able to get back on it. Uh, Danny Valencia, the rookie. Has already made his presence known up in Minneapolis, hitting 322. Rangers trying to win for the 71st time already. They are in great position to be playing in October. But nothing locked up yet. The A's come in this weekend and they can chomp off some of that lead real quick. In the air, center field this time. Borbone is back to the track. Oh, he made the catch! He smoked that ball 407 feet. But Borbone was playing deep and he's able to run it down. Well, Felice has got a couple of fastballs up. The Twins' right hand hitters have driven them the opposite way. Fortunately, Valencia hit that ball where he did almost any other part of the park, and it's gone. Borbone has made a scintillating catch coming in tonight, and now one leaping going back. That's some grace right there. Mike Maddox will head to the mound. To talk to Neptali Feliz. Jim Tomey is going to pinch hit. You better be real careful. It's one thing for Young to hit one that almost goes, for Valencia to hit one that almost goes. This guy, with that unapologetic all or nothing swing, if he hits one like that, it will go. You got Tomey hitting for Casilla, and Matt Tober is on deck to hit for Butera. If it gets that far. And Neptali makes some good pitches to Tony right here. Oh, you got the young gun out there on the mound. And at the plate, a guy with 581 home runs. Hit him. Hit him with a fastball. Boy, Tony took that right in the leg and never flinched. Tolbert will indeed pinch hit. There will be a pinch runner now as well. Should be Jason Repko. Repko, the former Dodger, good speed. So from the nine spot in the order, it'll be Matt Tolbert. The guy who's been up and down this year between a triple A in the big leagues. Switch hitter. And here we go. Strike one. Saw it coming. 
The Texas Rangers had trailed 2 0. It led 3 2, then almost gave up the lead. The Twins tied it. The Rangers stole it back. Michael Young delivered the game winning hit after making two errors tonight. They saw 96 mile an hour fastballs, and like most hitters, you're just not going to be ready to pull the trigger on the off speed slider. And he took it for strike three. That probably gets his 30 second save. Colby Lewis didn't get the win, but the Texas Rangers did. And the Twins, who had been 21 and 6 in their last 27. Well, they have gone to 0-2 here in Arlington. We'll come back in just a moment.